As Vice President of Public Policy and Government Affairs at Google, Susan leads policy and government relations work in North and South America. Prior to joining Google, Susan was a member of Congress, lobbyist, and public affairs executive. While in Congress, Susan was elected by her colleagues to Republican majority leadership, making her the highest ranking woman in the Congress. As a member of the House Budget Committee, she was at the forefront of producing Congress's first balanced budget in 29 years. She got her start in politics as the minority leader of the New York City Council. Susan, thanks for having us over to your house We're and welcome. To have you here. Give it up for Susan. Thank you, Seamus. I am going to be very brief right now because um, Senator Wyden is in a hurry because he's got the people's business that he has to attend to today. But first, I do have to welcome you all. We're so excited to be hosting you here today. Here in our DC office, we very much believe that smart policy encourages and enables innovation and technology to thrive, and that's a lot of what we try and do here. And of course, the reverse is true, which is what you're all working on today, that innovation and technology can make our government better, smarter, and more responsive. There's somebody here in this room, Senator Wyden, who is sort of the penultimate champion of the internet and believing that government shouldn't get in innovation's way, and in fact, innovation can help government. And since he's been in government office, he has really been the champion for all of us. He's worked on tireless efforts to protect intermediary liability protections that has allowed the internet to flourish as we know it, to his fight against government surveillance, to his protection of fair use and opposition to copyright legislation like PIP and SOPA. Internet users around the world, and I truly mean that, owe Senator Wyden the debt of gratitude for supporting the internet, allowing for an openness that we could not have even imagined in a couple of decades ago. <coughs> So the fact, ladies and gentlemen, that you are in this room and about to do what you're about to do and all the other things that you do when you leave here or before you got here are largely responsible. Senator Wyden is largely responsible for the atmosphere in the environment that has helped to create this open internet that has allowed you to provide us with the answers that we need for a better tomorrow. So Senator Ron Wyden. What? What an inflationary introduction. <laughs> And the first thing we ought to do at a hackathon is declare it to be a filibuster-free zone. <laughs> so I'm going to be, a, there we go. It's going to be real brief. As I was coming over, I was thinking, you hear the word hack, and people are hacking. And the gut says, gee, that sounds really bad. You know, people, up, people are up to something really awful. And I think the first thing we want to do is celebrate that this is hacking for the right reason. This is hacking for a good cause. This is hacking to make the government more open, more responsive, and more efficient. So I think the first thing a hackathon's got to do is say, oh, you may have heard all these creepy things about people you know, hacking, but this is for uh, the right uh, reason. And suffice it to say, and Susan really touched on it, you're here because through a whole lot of efforts, and they've been bipartisan, I know Daryl Issa is going to be here uh, in a bit, and there are a whole host of Democrats and Republicans who came together and said we wanted the bottom line in terms of technology policy is to have an open internet. Everything we have tried to do in terms of trying to keep the government out of stuff in areas like taxation, where the goal was to not have the net swamped by multiple and discriminatory you know, taxes, everything was about trying to keep the internet open. Susan made mention of the uh, liability you know, provision. Back in 1998, we found that a website or a blog could be, the owners could be held personally liable for something that was posted on it. Folks, if that decision had stood, I don't think there would have been the social media. I don't think people would have invested in that space if they knew that they were going to be held personally liable. So we had a bipartisan group, and we worked on it, and we managed to pass laws so that intermediaries wouldn't be held liable. Guess what? Just a couple of days ago in the United States Senate, almost everybody in the Senate, except Maria Cantwell and I, and she's from Washington, and I venture to say she's a hackathon veteran as well, we said we're not going to support chipping away at it. And yet virtually everybody in the United States Senate said, oh my goodness, we're concerned about sex trafficking. We ought to be. I don't take a back seat to anybody in terms of being against sex trafficking. But suddenly we were getting back into the business of holding intermediaries personally liable. So your fight 
after you thought you won it more than a decade ago, continues to go on even uh, today. Two last uh, points. First, when Susan mentioned the globe, boy, is that apocryphal. I don't think you can imagine a country in the last couple of years being as repressive online as China. It just takes your breath away. I mean, certainly we know about Russia and China. I'm on the Intelligence Committee. My older child calls it the so-called Intelligence Committee. <laughs> but, you know, China has really put a blanket of repression, you know, over the net. So this is a worldwide uh, battle. And the last point that I will make, um, you know, this morning uh, deals with Pippa and Sopa. So I put a hold on the predecessor of Pippa and Sopa. And I put a hold on Pippa and Sopa, it was the Senate version, uh, Pippa, as well. And at the time, there were more than 40 senators who were co-sponsoring Pippa, huge number in the House of Representatives. And people thought that the prospect of our derailing that, you know, was, you know, like one in a million. It was just like considered impossible. And 40 senators, that's practically all you need um, in order to just pass something uh, without any real debate. And I said, I don't think so. I think when the country and some of those folks online understand that in the name of fighting piracy, people are going to kind of go out there and start dismantling the net, the domain name system and the like, I just want you to know, I said to our senators and House members, I don't think people are going to be so quick at it. And everybody said, oh, that's Ron. He's from Oregon, you know, th this kind of thing. And I said, let me tell you, there are people who spend a lot more time online in a week um, than they do thinking about their senator in two years. And when they hear about this, they are not going to be so happy. And everybody said, fine, we're going to just blow through this. And a vote was scheduled. A vote was scheduled on overriding my hold. And five days... Five days before that vote, you all essentially hacked the Congress. You basically mobilized online. There were sites that went dark. There were sites that didn't go dark. But you essentially hacked the Congress with this grassroots juggernaut. And so the vote was scheduled for five days. And five days after you all you know, weighed in, and about 24 hours after you hacked the United States Congress, the online community pulled off what nobody thought there was a prayer of. And I got a call from the leadership saying the vote to override your hold has been canceled. So make no mistake about it, and I'll close with this. This is not some kind of abstract you know, exercise. You're going to work on open sourcing, and obviously a lot of journalists now and, and people who want to access them, it's a much more portable world, so we need that updated in an open source kind of fashion. I saw the list of projects you have. You know, it's, um, it's terrific. And I just wanted to come uh, today to say I think you're on the right side of history, you know, number one. Victories past that were important, like Pippa and Sopa, came about because you hacked for the right reason. And we learned again in the United States Senate a couple of days ago that your job isn't close to being done. So thank you, thank you, thank you for what you're doing. I thank Google. I thank Harvard. Have a great uh, have a great uh, meeting and look forward to doing a lot of uh, plotting with you in the days ahead. Thanks, everybody. Thank